please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log. Subdates 231012.8. With the room that the MPC crew used to inhabit being sketched now, I'm going to have to train a member of the senior staff to act as a suitable keep Bork alive at all costs guy so subfleet don't know I intend to nuke them now in 2024. Guy. Person. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with something I saw on Twitter via an N with an E. A fellow fuggler collector. Although in this instance you could argue it's more of a family, yes, who had tweeted, um, what? Retweeting Pop Crave. Jada Pinkett Smith reveals that she and Will have been separated for seven years. Okay, I have to restate Anne's tweet. What? Wasn't it only a couple years ago that you were called G.I. Jane by a midget, and your husband that you've been separated from at that point, five years, smacked the midget in the face? Aren't you the same person? who, in front of your husband, spoke about your own infidelity, sorry, open marriage, whilst simultaneously being married to Will, or separated at the same time depending on when the times lined up. So we're going to go to a BBC article to get a bit more context. This might help us. Jada Pinkett Smith told NBC in an interview that she promised herself that she and Will would never get a divorce, and she has not been able to break the promise. Quote, I think we were both just kind of stuck in our fantasy of what we thought the other person should be. As you can see here, we're off to a fantastic start. We made a commitment, but it doesn't mean we have to be together. You sound like Vince and Linda McMahon. Except in this one, Jada, you're Vince. Jada also claimed in the interview that she thought Will slapping Chris was actually part of a joke, and it wasn't until Will started to walk back to his chair that she even realised it wasn't a skit. Also saying, I'm going to be by his side but also allow him to have to figure this out for himself. The article finishes by talking about the entanglement with August Alsina. It's actually entanglement literally written there, which is quite amazing, really. Now, considering how much damage has been done to Will's reputation and his career, although I would argue a few movies have done that as well, it is quite amusing to me he has gone to bat for his wife, and he's paid the price for it, but you have acted as if you are removed from it, but you're married so you surely would want to back your man. But at the same time, you're separated and have been for several years, which means, which, I'll be honest, just means you were there because you knew he was going to win Best Actor, and you wanted to be seen next to your husband to enhance your own profile. That might sound a little conspiratorial, but I think it adds up. But then Will still went to bat for you, acted out, pays the price for it to this day, while you continue your career of showing just how much of a shitty person you are by doing things like that rather pathetic revisionist history interpretation of Cleopatra. What this does is demonstrate that Will has been better to you because he's still there, while you're busy doing your own thing, which in turn makes you look like an even bigger shithouse. Personally, I think the entire concept of marriage is redundant at this point. A lot of people would only stay together for the children, but your kids are adults now. So you have no reason to stay together beyond an empty promise to not take a ring off your hand. But if things go well for Will, you'll naturally be by his side, while simultaneously making him look like the world's biggest cuck. Or disappointment, whichever you prefer, really. Based on what I've seen of your offspring of late, disappointment seems to run in the family. So I guess before we move on to the next subject concerning Captain Tom Moore, we should ask the obvious question. What is so important about keeping a promise to stay married and not get divorced when you two have been separated for, as you claim, six to seven years. Why is it so important to keep that promise when you've already broken promises already? Like, for example, the August Alsina hookup, and in before someone might try and stan? If Jada Pinkett Smith is so willing to share parts of her life, but not answer simple questions querying the parts she has shared in a form of criticism to understand better what someone means, then chances are they are again only doing this to make it seem like they are more than they really are, smarter than they are, or as if their life is more important than it really is, when in reality they just look like they want to harm people cause. And in this instance, Will. You are such a shit wife, he stood up for you, defended you, 
although it was kind of embarrassing. And you shat on him. On this channel, I've been quite vocal in my criticisms of the daughter of Captain Tom. I will state for those who don't know who he is, Captain Tom Moore during lockdown raised £39 million for the NHS by walking around his garden. The man was quite old, exceptionally old, and was for his work knighted by the Queen. His daughter, Hannah Ingram Moore, during a number of interviews since, has come across as a bit of a grifter. Last year, we spoke about how she had built an office space on her property, which was actually her dad's and left to her. The annex that was built was meant to be an office space for the foundation in his name. She, though, changed it into a domicile without getting planning permission first, building bathrooms, kitchens, and a pool. This sounds less like a foundation and more like an extra property. Other things, though, that have come to light include the fact that Captain Tom Moore had a number of books. One was called Captain Tom's Life Lessons, another 100 Steps, and his autobiography, Tomorrow Will Be a Good Day. The family was adamant that people buying the publications would be benefiting charity because all the money would go to charity. Okay, well, it turns out the family are now claiming they were never told by anyone that the money from those book sales were going to charity, meaning that Hannah Ingram Moore has recently admitted to pocketing more than £800,000 from the books written by Sir Captain Tom Moore. The claim that they did not know the money from the book sales was for charity has been called into question because at the end of his autobiography in the prologue, it reads, Astonishingly, at my age, with the offer to write this memoir, I have also been given the chance to raise even more money for the charitable foundation now established in my name. Meaning the money was never meant to go to the family, it was meant to go to the foundation. Hannah Ingram Moore has recently given an interview to Talk TV's Pierce Morgan. She has spoken about the fact that for the foundation, as an interim chief executive for the foundation, she earned 85000 as a salary. She also speaks about how she made £18,000 as a judge at an awards ceremony which featured the charity's name. Only £2,000 of that fee was donated to the organisation. To act on behalf of the foundation and pocket eight-ninths of it is an astonishing split. That's the kind of split I'd see from certain boxers when they're attempting to lowball their opponent. During the same interview, they also speak about their regrets. Yes, regrets over building the spa and pool complex at the mansion, but hope they will win the appeal to keep it nevertheless. I'm assuming now they've decided the office space for the foundation that the family will use in Tom Moore's honor, name Captain Sir Tom Moore's name, honor, yes. Uh, will instead be conducted on an iPad on a beanbag in a closet. When discussing the books, Hannah Ingram Moore said the money made went into Club Nook Limited, a firm separate to the charity in his name. Quote, These are my father's books and it was honestly such a joy for him to write them but they were his books. He had an agent and they worked on that deal and his wishes is that the money would sit in Club Nook and in the end, to which Pierce Morgan interrupted for you to keep and she replies, yes. Since the back of the book clearly states in his own writing it was intended for the foundation, the question now becomes, why are you stealing money your dad had intended to go to charity to benefit less fortunate people? You have a £1.2 million home that you've renovated with your dad's money, money of which was earmarked for charity in the first place, and you're using an interview with Pierce Morgan to cry victim. Or because you've bothered to then look at online forums where people do not like you because they've looked at what you've done, your actions, and have come to the realization you are a grifting hack. You've stolen money, essentially. You've dishonored what your father had done, and you've used what he had done to promote yourself only. And don't forget here, you, Hannah, had attempted to take on the foundation chief executive role for a hundred thousand pounds a year which is a salary similar to that run by the heads of major charities, not one that does not generate anywhere near as much money. You're still pulling in a phenomenal amount of money from the foundation to yourself, while claiming this is all not for profit. Someone's making a profit. In this instance, it's you and your husband. I'm going to do an honourable mention to Brian Bomack McIntyre. He is the boxing trainer for Terence Crawford and for Chris Eubank Jr., who recently beat Liam Smith in a rematch. When he came into the UK, his luggage clearly wasn't checked. On the way out, they found a Smith & Wesson and seven rounds of ammunition in his um, suitcase in the zip part. Yeah, 
In the UK, it is illegal to possess these kind of pew pew devices. Where he was flying from, Nebraska, he has a license. It is an exceptional circumstance, but he has admitted guilt to possession of a firearm and ammunition and was sentenced to 20 months in prison, suspended for two years. Because even the judge has to admit here, this is a case of it can be forgotten. It was literally hidden in the zip part of his suitcase where he never thought to check because he went from one fight straight to another and flew out here to get that fight done. Honorable mention because it's dumb, of course the luggage should have been checked, but at least it has a moderately happy ending for Bomac, right? And I can't criticise him too much. He did pretty well with Terence Crawford and with Chris Eubank recently. To the last subject, I want to talk about Aquaman 2, Elon Musk and Jason Momoa. So courtesy of Sugar Tits on Twitter, thanks Elon, thanks a lot. From news.com.au So it's legit news. Elon Musk reportedly threatened to burn down studio if they fired Amber Heard from Aquaman 2. Elon Musk had apparently, allegedly, fired off an aggressive note to Warner Brothers. Okay. Well, let's now go to an article from Variety on this. Apparently, Jason Momoa would turn up intoxicated on the set of Aquaman, dressed like Johnny Depp, and push to have Amber Heard booted from the role of Mera from that movie, with one note saying Jason said he wanted to be fired. Jason drunk, late on set, dressed like Johnny, has all the rings too. A representative of Momoa has declined to comment on this. But a DC spokesperson pushed back on the characterization, saying, Momoa conducts himself in a professional manner at all times on the set of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Jason works his ass off, likes to have a beer once in a while like everyone. No, not true. Whiskey's better. My Amazon wishlist will attest. By all means, support me there. Thank you. Yes, I'm oh, glorious. But he doesn't show up drunk on set. And he isn't dressing like Johnny Depp. He is always dressed in that bohemian style. Amber Heard declined comment. But a source close to the actress confirmed that the notes refer to the Aquaman 2 set and reflect a session from December 2021. Therapy sessions also paint the picture of Amber Heard feeling unsupported by the director, James Wan, and being treated like a pariah because of her legal battle with Johnny Depp, which she lost. Wan has also declined to comment. It's quite amusing here, you've got like he said and then no she said. Straight up, it's just one-sided. This movie is one of the last ones to come out of the, um, well, this current iteration of DC, right? It's not looking good for them right now, because all the others have absolutely tanked. So, uh, what do they intend to do with this after? Because it's it's a bit, well, it's, it's, it's not going to work now. I think we can all agree here, DC's dead. Congratulations? Yeah. Congratulations.